That's one small step for a man, one giant leap for mankind. Neil Armstrong's first words as he steps onto the moon, man's triumphant adventure. I am astronaut Frank Borman, one of the privileged few who have flown to the moon. The heavenly choir you hear, telemetry from satellites, begins on October the 4th, 1957, with a simple birth cry of Soviet Union Sputnik 1. America's first successful satellite, Explorer 1, rises into the night sky on January the 31st, 1958. Radio Moscow, April 1961. The first man speaks from Earth orbit, cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin. His people and the world sing his praises while America waits and waits. Two minutes, 40 seconds and holding. May 5th, 1961. The flight of astronaut Alan B. Shepard finally counts down to zero. Zero. All right, uh, lift off and the clock has started. This is Freedom 7. The fuel is go. All systems are go. What a beautiful view. Within three weeks, President John F. Kennedy defines the challenge. Before this decade is out, of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. And in full view of the world, accepting failure with success, thus millions watch breathlessly on February the 20th, 1962, as America makes its first attempt to orbit a man. T minus 18 seconds and counting engines start. You have firing signal. Good Lord, ride all the way. You've got speed, John Glenn. Roger, we're underway. After three orbits, John Glenn's capsule streaks toward the Atlantic. Suspect ship seven, a real fireball outside. Roger, in the rock clear, how are you doing? My condition is good, but that was a real fireball, boy. In 1963, Russia orbits a woman cosmonaut, Valentina Tereshkova. With America's Gemini craft of 1965 and 1966, the moon comes closer as men maneuver, rendezvous, dock, and walk in space. June the 3rd, 1965. Ed White paces off 6,000 Earth miles through the sky. Okay, I'm out. The flight director says, get back in. Jim, uh, got a message for us? Jimmy Porter, get back in. <laughs> then tragedy. Not in space, but on the ground. On January the 27th, 1967, during a pre-flight test for the first Apollo mission, a fire takes the lives of Virgil Grissom, Edward White, and Roger Chaffee. Russia, three months later, mourns cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov, killed during re-entry by a parachute failure. Not until December 1968 does man try for the moon. William Anders, James Lovell, and I reached the moon and start around it. The world waits. We've heard nothing yet. We've got it, uh, we've got it. Apollo uh, 8 now in, in lunar orbit. The vast loneliness up here on the moon is uh, all inspiring. For all the people back on Earth, the crew of Apollo 8 has a message. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the Earth. Our Christmas Eve greeting to Earth, the first verses of Genesis. And from the crew of Apollo 8,
Like men climbing one another's shoulders, the Apollo flights of 1969 climbed step by step toward a landing on the moon. In March, Apollo 9 successfully tests the docking procedures. In May, Apollo 10 performs a dramatic dress rehearsal. The landing craft Snoopy drops to within nine miles of the moon's surface, as Charlie Brown, the command ship, orbits far overhead. Oh, Houston, Houston, this is Snoopy. Right, Snoop, go ahead. It's going, we have done among us, Charlie. Roger, I hear you weaving your way up the freeway. Then crisis. Snoopy begins to tumble as it sheds its descent stage before blasting itself toward a rendezvous with the command ship. Buster went wild there on that stage. Charlie Brown, uh, Houston, they got staging, uh, they, uh, had a wild, uh, gyration, though. Well, I don't know what the hell that was, babe. Uh, Snoopy, yeah, Houston, you're looking okay for the insertion burn. Okay, baby, let's make this one. The stage was set for history's most momentous exploration. Wednesday, July the 16th, Cape Kennedy, Florida. The target for the Apollo 11 astronauts, the moon, at liftoff will be at a distance of 218,096 miles away. perfect launch and a perfect four-day flight. On Sunday, July 20th, Neil A. Armstrong and Edwin Buzz Aldrin in the landing craft Eagle leave Michael Collins in the command ship Columbia and descend to the moon's surface. Okay, all flight controllers, go to go for landing. Retro. Go. Right off. Go. Guidance. Go. Control. Go. 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 Capcom, we're go for landing. Eagle, Houston, you're go for landing. Riding a wing of flame, Eagle breaks down toward the crater-scarred sea of tranquility. Eagle looking great, you're go. Forward. Forward. 40 feet down, two and a half. Picking up some dust. 30 feet, two and a half down. Big shadow. Four forward. Four forward, just into the right low. Two and a half. 30 seconds. Forward. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. APA at a descent. Control both auto descent command override off. Engine arm off. 413 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. It is a long early morning on the moon, but on the busy Earth, time seems to stop as 600 million human beings share the greatest drama, watching and listening as Neil Armstrong opens the hatch and starts down the ladder. Aldrin guides him from above. How am I doing? You're doing fine. Okay, Houston, I'm on the porch. Roger, Neil. And we're getting a picture on the TV. So we can see you coming down the ladder now. I'm um, uh, at the foot of the ladder. That's one small step for man. We have reached the moon and look beyond it to our fellow planets of the solar system. But the best view of all is back toward the Earth, 
and the essential brotherhood of all of the men upon it. Tomorrow, together, where might we not go? Three, two, all engines running. Lift off. We have lift off. The tower is clear. 